Hi there, my name is Richie Kotzen and Young Guitar is at my house and we're doing a little feature, uh, feature story. And one of the things we're doing is going through some of the guitars in my collection, talking about which ones are important and I was going to share a little insight uh, behind the instrument. So the first one that I chose is this guitar right here. Now, this is a signature model, Richie Kotzen Fender Telecaster, that was first introduced to the Japanese market in 1996. Now, the original one was Seafoam Green, and shortly after that, we did one like this, the Tobacco Sunburst, which is now the current model, and it's my main guitar. Um, and this guitar is pretty much right off the rack with two exceptions. Um, once I get the guitar off the rack, I take a sandpaper and lightly take off a little bit of the finish because I just like the feel of, of the natural wood. And I uh, also added the drop D tuner, which um, nowadays I really don't use it that much. So if I was going to get a new guitar, I might not even bother putting that on there. But it is on this guitar, is a little tuner which I love it because if I'm backstage, I can check really quick, make sure everything is in order, and um, works on a nine volt battery, you just put it in there, you don't have to modify the guitar. And it was made by a company called N-Tune. I'm not sure if they're still around, but if you can get your hands on one, they're, they're really cool and convenient. Um, one of the things about the guitar, although the appearance was modeled after one of my custom shop telecasters, which I'll show you later. Um, one of the things about the guitar that's cool is we have the comfort cut, which was actually on the original telecaster model that Fender made for me back in 1996. And then years later, they started putting these comfort cuts on a lot of their guitars. But back, back then, I don't ever remember seeing them on a telecaster. Telecasters are more squared off here. So this makes the guitar a little more comfortable. And we did taper a little bit here, so it's a bit like a, a strat in the sense that there's a taper, which is a, not an easy thing to do when you have a binding. Um, but the guys at Fender figured out a way to do that. So this has been my main touring guitar, man, for probably 10 or 11 years, I want to say. And one of the funny things, I, uh, I'll tell you about it, and that'll be the last thing I say about this guitar. Um, people often ask me, why there's that mark there? So I, I joke around and I say, well, that's because my favorite note is, is G sharp. <laughs> but that's not true. Um, why that's there is because I opened my case one day and there was a crack. I thought it was a crack. And I was worried if it was a crack or just a, a dent. So I started sanding there and then it went away. So it was just a little dent. And I was just concerned that it might have been a crack. But what I ended up doing, I, I sanded off some of the protective coating. So, it's just a stain from sweat and playing the guitar. But uh, this, as far as Telecasters go, this one here is my main Telecaster. Uh, nothing custom built about it other than me taking sandpaper to it, putting this on and putting that on. Uh, you can get the exact same guitar wherever you buy guitars. And um, I love it, it's a great instrument. Leading the, the next guitar is, it probably looks exactly like the one I just had, but it isn't. Um, this is a 1992, or 91 maybe, it must be 91. This is a Fender Master Built by Larry Brooks Telecaster. This, along with the Strat that I'll show later, is one of the first two guitars that Fender gave me back in 91. I was in the studio making a record, and the bass player had a Fender endorsement. And he had his rep come in, and the rep saw these Telecasters that I had that were not made by Fender. They were pretty much uh, replicas. And he, he said, oh man, he said, we have to get you the real, the real deal. And so he came back and gave me this Telecaster. And so this was my main guitar, uh, along with a Stratocaster that I'll show you later. But this was my main Telecaster for leading all the way up to the point where I, I got my signature model in 96. So from 91 to 96, 
This was my main guitar. Um, you'll see it in uh, videos of me when I played with the group Poison. Uh, this is the guitar I was using. This is the guitar on the record. And uh, it's a beautiful instrument. It um, has a slightly different neck than the signature Tele. Uh, it's a little smaller. It does have the big jumbo frets like the, my signature Tele, but it does not have the comfort cuts. It, it's not tapered here. Um, and what else? Oh, something I forgot to mention on the signature Tele. On this one, this is a normal tone knob, but on the signature Tele that, that looks very similar to this, the middle position, uh, this is a toggle switch to go from series to parallel on my signature guitar. I forgot to mention that. On this guitar, it's a normal tone control. But uh, I really love this instrument. It even has a little cigarette burn here from back when I was chain smoking and, and recording when they let you smoke indoors. I used to do what all the guys would do and put their cigarette there. So it's got the little burn on it. And what else can I say about it? It's just a lovely guitar. I don't take it out of the house uh, and, and I won't because I would really be upset if, uh, if something happened to it. So this is, uh, this is my main, main, main telly that I played from the, when I was 21 years old until I was about 26. Okay, so now I'm holding the sister guitar to the brown Telecaster that I just showed you. It's another master built by Larry Brooks. And um, it's around the same time, 91. And this is the Stratocaster that Fender gave me the same day they gave me the, uh, the Custom Shop Telecaster. They gave me this red Strat. And uh, for the longest time, it had Texas Specials in it. Somewhere along the line, I put a DiMarzio pickup in here because it suited my purposes at the time. And um, it's basically a normal Strat, uh, but the, the wood that I like, that I always had on all my guitars, was this kind of flame maple, and the bodies were, uh, the back were always swamp ash. And so all my master-built guitars um, have that wood configuration, and so do the signature model guitars. And so this guitar I had around the exact same time that I, I received the Telecaster. Um, it feels different than my signature Strat because with the Strat I wanted the big neck that's on the Telecaster. Uh, and so, but, but this one was before I had my signature model. So this has a, a much thinner neck. It still plays great, sounds amazing, um, and has the big frets that I like. But the neck is much thinner than, than what I became used to. And uh, what else can I say about it? I used this guitar extensively in 1994 on a record called Motherhead's Family Reunion. Um, I also have a white version of this guitar that became my main guitar for many years. That was a custom shop white Stratocaster with what they call a Mary Kay finish. Uh, I have a signature model version, which I'll show you right now. Okay, now here I am with my two signature model Stratocasters. The white one has been in production since 1996, and it's very similar in the wood to the guitar I just had, the red Custom Shop Strat. Although the big difference is this one has the big neck that I like, and also uh, DiMarzio pickups that are single coil pickups. They're a very Strat sounding guitar, you know, it's, there's no uh, tricks or anything as far as wiring. Uh, I did put in this tuner that I talked about er earlier that I love. And um, in recent times, this guitar has become my other main guitar. So when I'm not playing that brown Telecaster, I'm playing the white Strat. And I've taken it on the road on my last couple of tours. and. It seems like these days I've been favoring the Strat. For years I've gone back and forth from Tele, and then I go to the Strat, and now it seems like I'm in a Stratocaster phase of my career. Um, in addition to this being available to you uh, as a signature guitar in white, it's also available in red. Um, I originally wanted to match the red of my Custom Shop guitar, and then after going back and forth a bunch of times, I decided to go with this red that's a little more of a, a deeper 
uh, maybe a wine color as opposed to the, the candy apple um, red custom shop version. So these two um, also are available uh, at the guitar stores and what have you if you're interested in getting a Richie Cotson signature model strap. They have them. <laughs>
And you can also see me uh, playing this in my, a music video I have called Devil's Hand. At the very end, there's a long guitar solo, and this is the, the guitar that I, I used uh, for the video. Not the guitar in the recording, actually. The guitar in the recording is a big hollow body Yamaha. Um, I don't know the model name, but it's a very big double cutaway. And that, that's actually what you're hearing. But in the video, uh, I, I grabbed this one on the way out. I almost went to the video shoot without a guitar, if you can believe that. So this is the guitar in the video. Um, one of the only vintage instruments that I, I have, and I, I don't think I would ever sell it because I really love the guitar and it plays great and it sounds great. We're staying on the Fender theme. Uh, this is the last one that I'm going to show you that is a Fender guitar. But obviously, as you can see, Fender is my thing. That's what I play. Um, anyway, this is the very first Fender guitar that I bought. And I was going through a phase. I was working with Ibanez and my style was changing. My tastes were changing. And they started making me Telecaster lookalikes through a brand called Starfield. Beautiful guitars, really nice. But I wanted to get a real Fender just to have it. So I went out one day and I bought a Stratocaster and I bought this Telecaster. This Telecaster was originally yellow. You can see a little bit here of the original color. It was a yellow guitar and I sanded the finish off and I painted it like this messy tie-dye look. And then I carved my name in the back. <laughs> so if anyone takes it, they're gonna know it's mine. Um, then later, years later, I took the neck off because I never really cared for the neck. And I put on one of my signature model necks. And this is a neck from a guitar that I obviously played a lot because the neck really is played in. You can see there's a lot of grime on here. Um, but this guitar, believe it or not, you've heard on a lot of my recordings. Uh, it was one, you know, I'm not real particular when I'm working. I work very fast in the studio and I'll grab just about anything just to get the idea going. But there was a few years where this guitar was within the closest of my reach. And it ended up on quite a few records. A lot of the Winery Dog stuff is either this or the other Telecaster that I had in my hand, the, my, the one that you see me play with all the time. Uh, but this is a very important guitar for me, being that it's the first Fender that I bought. It has my signature model neck, so it's kind of a hybrid between my signature model and, uh, and, the, uh, and this original guitar. I did change the pickup, and it's the same one, the Chopper T, which is the one that is in my signature model guitar. It just happens to be blue. So this guitar, you have seen me with this. If you have my second album, I'm on the cover of the Fever Dream record holding this guitar. Um, this guitar is the, is the one that you hear on the Fever Dream record. Uh, the previous record, is, it's not this because this didn't exist. But I, shortly after making the first record, I signed with Ibanez. And they wanted to personalize something for me um, it has my name on here, but it's kind of worn off on the top. But they wanted to personalize, this is very dusty. They wanted to personalize something for me on the guitar. And so I said, well, um, I don't use the tone knob. And back then I was coming off a guitar where the pickup selector was up top. I said, so put a mini switch up top for the pickups and just a volume knob. So I don't know how or why they didn't... <laughs> They didn't give me a guitar from scratch. They took one of the other guitars that already had route holes in it for the tone knob and the selector switch. And then they gave it to me. But I told them, I want you to paint horror movie uh, graphics because I, I liked the old horror films back then. So it was my idea to put all these things. I had a book that had all the old horror movie stories and pictures, a big, big old book. I don't know what ever happened to it. And I gave it to them and they did this for me. They did uh, this one, and on the back it has Lon Chaney. Uh, they did a neck through body guitar, which I have here at the house, which is beautiful. It's a stunning guitar, all one you know, neck through body. 
Uh, and, and it's the neck through body with the natural wood sanded off. I mean, that's a really beautiful in instrument. But I chose to talk about this one because this is the one you've seen before. And, uh, and so that was my thing, the horror movie thing. And they made this for me. Somehow, and I don't know how, I've seen online guitars painted like this. And I didn't think that Ivan has ever made more than the two that they gave me. Actually, there was four they made. I had three at one point and I gave one away and now I have two. But this is the original Richie Copson, what they call horror guitar. So um, if someone's out there thinks that they have the original, they don't. This is it. Uh, probably, I doubt I'll ever sell it. Um, and, uh, but yeah, this is the original one. Uh, so that's it. Okay, so now here we are with a really cool guitar. This guitar my father bought for me when I was 15. And this is one of the very first Paul Reed Smith guitars ever made. It's literally number, literally, I love when people say literally. It's number 121. And uh, they first made this in 1985, I think was the first year of production. And um, I had this when I was 15 and I used to play it on stage with my band I had back then called Arthur's Museum. And this is just a beautiful instrument. It's just stunning. But the story behind it is, is very interesting. Right around the time that I joined Mr. Big, uh, no, I have it backwards, around the time that my time with Mr. Big came to an end, I had sold a bunch of equipment. I had a whole bunch of guitars, I had a bunch of Marshall cabinets, and I had a, a bass guitar. So in the lot of things, I put this in, and I sold this guitar. And one of my friends, I always regretted selling this, because I knew it was one of the very first ones ever made, and I didn't sell it for very much. And so I always regretted it. And last year I was in Las Vegas and one of my close friends says, hey, I know where your Paul Reed Smith is. And the guy is selling all his guitars. So I went to the guy's house and sure enough, he had my guitar and I bought it back from him. And I paid $500 more than what I sold it for. Um, so it was kind of strange. It's almost like I paid him $500 to store it for 10 years or however many years it's been that I've been out of the, out of the band. Uh, but this was mine since I was 15 and I, and I got it back. So I'm very happy about that. Now this guitar has a lot of importance to me. This is my first real guitar. And when I say real, I mean my first quality instrument. What had happened was um, I uh, went to my guitar teacher with a yard sale guitar, and um, he told my parents that you know, the guitar was unplayable. So that night we went out and bought an inexpensive electric guitar, something that was playable, nothing very expensive, because they didn't know if I was gonna take to the instrument or not. And so they bought me a Gibson Marauder and kind of looked like a Les Paul, but a little different. And that was my guitar for about a year, or maybe more, maybe it was a couple of years. And then once they knew I was serious for Christmas one year, they surprised me with this. And they, they went to the store to buy a Gibson Les Paul. That's what they went to buy. And the guy convinced them not to buy the Les Paul because he had these Yamahas that he was promoting. And back then Santana was playing these. So my, my parents bought this for me, and uh, you can hear this guitar on my first record. Anything where I'm not using a whammy bar is this guitar. Um, this was my main guitar live in my band for many, many years. And um, I have a white one, just like it actually. And, and that one has my initials on the 11th fret, uh, which I guess could confuse some people because most of the time you don't have a marking on the 11th fret, but that guitar does. And so I have this red Yamaha 2000, and then I have a white 3000, and those were my main guitars when I was very young. Like, I got this, I think, when I was 12. And then the white one, I think, I got when I was 14. Yeah. 
So this, I believe, is the only Gibson guitar I own, and that's kind of crazy to think, because I own, I, I counted after the, the Woolsey fire that rip, ripped through the canyon here, I, ha I did inventory on my guitars, because I wanted to know what I had, and I counted almost 90 stringed instruments, including basses and uh, a mandolin, uh, it was like 87 or 88 instruments. Um, but this one is the, out of all of them, this is the only Gibson I have, which is kind of hard to believe. Um, it's so old that it says the Gibson. And the story behind this guitar, this was my great grandfather's guitar who came from Florence, Italy. And he uh, used to use this guitar and play Italian folk songs to my mom. So. When I lived in Pennsylvania, this guitar stayed in my room on a stand, and I really didn't mess with it too much. Uh, and then when I left to move to California, my mom kept it in her room, and I kept telling her to send it to me, and she never would. She didn't trust me with it. She, I don't know why. And finally, I convinced her to send me the guitar, and I've actually used it on a few recordings. If you listen to the 50 for 50 record, there's a song called Innocuous at the end of the first disc, and you can hear my, my great-grandfather's guitar on that recording. <laughs> 